same clothes. What? Yeah, we just decided, you know what? Why we change outfits, outfits every day when you can just wear the same clothes for a week? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what we're doing. Here we are. Yeah. Um, well, nothing has really changed in the past. However, what did we just experience? Oh, experience? a strip club. We did. No. Next to a restaurant. <sighs> Okay, how misleading is this? So we pull up and it's like one of those little strip centers and it's yeah. called Wildcat Pub. Wildcat Pub. And then next to that, there's a sign that's called, and it says Wildcat XXX. So I'm like, oh, so they've got a pub and then a strip club next door. Yeah. And I was like, I have to ask. So we yeah. go inside and I'm like, okay, so what's next door? And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, well... <laughs> Your sign just says Wildcat, but there's a Wildcat XXX. He goes, well, the XXX is for Prohibition. Yeah. Which, okay, I get it. I understand yeah, the reference. But I'm like, now. well, then why don't both signs say Wildcat XXX? It's very misleading yeah. when there's two different signs. It looks like a completely different business. Or like yeah. you walk into a completely different like door. Yeah, to it doesn't make sense club to me. Or something. I'm, I have a feeling it's definitely not the first time they've been asked that, but he seemed right. confused a little bit. Yeah, we were like, where are the strippers? Yeah. He's like, what? We're like, here we are! We came into a fly! <laughs> we're here! Spittle, but I've had to. Um, so, so yeah. That was an interesting lunch. Yeah, yeah. terrible marketing skills, honestly. Yeah. Or maybe great marketing skills. Maybe. Maybe that's why they have they get customers. Maybe so. I mean, the guys at the bar seem to be interested in the XXX. Also, so. men, like, Jesus. I get you don't see girls, like, in full glam at noon, but, like... I wanted to yeah. literally look at some of those guys and be like, take a picture, it'll, it'll last, last longer. longer. <laughs> They're just like, <laughs> do you hear that voice yeah. that just came out my throat? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably what they sounded like too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, like, man. what the heck? Like, chill out, freaks. Yeah. So, that was our news. That was it. The Adventures also, of Cadence and Alexa. <laughs> yep, and The Adventures. We are still drinking the same bottle, so yep. uh, round two of mimosas. Woo! Since it's only 1.48 in the afternoon. Cheers. So, cheers. I haven't had a brunch cocktail in so long. It's mm. delicious. I know it is really good. Okay, guys. Well, th we are on episode 24. Five, which Woo. is very exciting. Yeah, it's so um, before we get started, our videos and podcasts are for entertainment purposes. All info discussed was found on the internet. Keep in mind, we're going to talk all things sinister that may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. <clears throat> so, oh, we need to think of a drinking word. I know. I'm trying to think of that. So you gave me like a, a hint of okay. the woman. Mm hmm Little sneaky, sneaky peek. I almost think like even just saying Italy. Yeah. Like will work. Like Italy or Italian or yeah. something. Yeah, that should probably work. Because I was thinking like soap or cakes, like I don't think that's gonna be used a lot. Maybe Yeah. Or how about this? Because just looking at my notes, when we name Something Italian, like an Italian word. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, because do I don't really say, I, yeah. I actually purposefully left out a lot of the names because they're it's so hard. hard to say. Yeah, I bet. So if we just say something that's Italian. Yeah, that works. Okay. Or if you say Italy or Italian. Or Italy. Got All it. the Italian things. Oh. Okay. drink. Okay. So today we are talking, and guys, I'm going to butcher mm -hmm. every single name in this story. Her name is Leonarda Canchuli is what I heard, how I heard it said on YouTube, Canchuli. Okay. But we're going to call her Leonarda because I can say that. So <clears throat> this is Italy's most famous serial killer known as the soap maker of Correggio. See, there you go, Italian word, drink. <laughs> who murdered three women in less than one year, turning their bodies into soaps and tea cakes as a means of human sacrifice. Oh my gosh. Mm, delicious. So, <laughs> we're officially in Aries now. Mm, we are. Um, so crazy. I don't think I've ever gotten to introduce like one of the Zodiacs. 
I don't know if it's ever fallen like that. Oh, you, really? So here I am yeah. introducing my very own Zodiac. It's yeah. very exciting for me. I'm honored. So I'm curious. So okay. Let's hear. Yeah, so Aries are passionate, hardworking, and stubborn, just as an overview. Mm -hmm. um, the symbol of Aries is the ram, obviously very hard-headed. But it's ruled by the planet Mars, which represents the god of war. So Aries are just very ready aggressive to people ready to, to begin with. Um, <clears throat> however, we Arians are surprisingly sweet and sensitive, but deep down. Like you kind of okay. have to you break the walls. Okay. Take what you can get. So... Though we try our best to be independent, um, we do care about relationships more than we like to admit. I can fully say that that's the truth. Okay. Um, I don't like to get all feely, lovey-dovey, but it's yeah. like, deep down, I feel it. Yeah. So as far as Aries as a serial killer, I took this from somewhere. <laughs> One of the most Standout traits of an Aries is their unpredictability and outbursts of energy, but as murderers, they often leave trails behind them. Ooh. So maybe a little messy? Yeah, a little messy, it sounds like. So yeah. does that kind of make sense? Absolutely. Especially yeah. this whole unpredictability, outbursts of energy. Um, leaving trails behind, yes and no. Do you no. tend to get in trouble? No, you because I'm not. a good kid. I have to avoid yeah. trouble because I would. I'm a terrible liar. Yeah. I'm terrible. I can't do it. My sister says I have this face when I lie where I like, I do this weird thing with my lips and she shows me and I'm like, I don't do that. She swears that I do it when I lie. <laughs> so, Leonardo was born April 18th, 1893 in Montella, Avellino, <laughs> which is... Southern Italy. <laughs> so, obviously we're talking about the late 1800s. Can't dive really deep into childhood, but there's so much so much speculation in this story. So, as a young girl, she was very depressed, very unhappy, and actually attempted suicide twice before oh. reaching adulthood. Wow. Yes. That's sad. And it said that her mom, which we'll talk about later, was very superstitious, um, very like, like instilled a lot of fear in her. So maybe mm -hmm. there's a lot of depression and anxiety stemming from yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. Um, so 1917, fast forward, she's around the age of 24 at this time. She marries a registry office clerk named Raphael Pansardi. Hmm. And... The family did not approve of this, especially the mom. They sort of had someone picked out for her that they approved of. They didn't like this guy for whatever reason. And so the mom, like, cursed her. And by curse, I mean, like, put, like, a, a curse on her. Like a hex. Um, like a hex. And it's said <laughs> that, like, she lived with that fear her entire life, that, like, her relationships were never going to work out. So... Oh my god. Yeah. The speculation was kind of the mom did this throughout her life. Yeah. Which is probably Sounds like... Sounds like mom was... A little kooky. Little crazy. A little kooky. A little bit of that Italian voodoo. Yes. That's the thing. Exactly. So, is that Italian? Oh, who did? <laughs> so, um, fast forward four years, 1921... The couple moves to the husband's native town, which is about two hours away, so far enough to be far. Mm -hmm. And this, I don't, I could not find out the details, but Leonardo was sentenced and imprisoned for fraud in 1927, so just after six years of living there. Oh my gosh. A um, little bit of a troublemaker, but always got caught. So kind yeah. of that, like, leaving things behind. Yeah, leaving the trail behind. Yes. Wow. So, oh my gosh. Follow me here. <laughs> this gets, again, I, this is why I didn't throw names out. Yeah. So they move again because of this in okay. 1930, now two and a half hours away from where they started. So from their hometown. Okay. Um, but this is where the big famous Italian earthquake hits mm. and destroys like everything. The yeah. city, I mean, it, I think it's like one of their biggest recorded earthquakes in history. Wow. Yeah, so 
what did they decide to do? Move, Move again. again. Exactly. This Makes time. Sense. Why not? This time they're like, okay, we're gonna go further. We're clearly not far enough yeah, away we're from not the curse. Far enough away. Yeah. So it's six hours away this time. Um, in this town, her husband opens a small shop. Oh. Don't know what the shop was. And they were seemingly well respected by neighbors. Like people really seemed to like them. There was nothing weird. Okay. Now earlier in Leonardo's life, like obviously she has the influence of her mom and the superstitions, but she yeah. goes and sees a fortune teller palm reader. Okay. Here, they said to her, quote, and I just lost my place, tells her that she will be married and all of her children will die young. So any child that she has is going to die young. Oh my and gosh. this uh, Ro Romani fortune teller also said, In your right hand, I see prison. In your left, a criminal asylum. <gasps> Which... It was true. Ends up being very true. Like, like to a T true. So... Oh my god, even like with her kids true? Like... So... Wow. I mean, yeah, this, this is crazy. So, because of all of this, like, she somewhat herself kind of become... Starts practicing, like, psychic readings and palm reading, which yeah. we'll get into. Yeah. So, during their marriage, Leonardo was pregnant 17 times. Oh my... Three of them died of, of miscarriage. Ten of them died in their youth. So she only had four surviving kids in total. 17 fucking kids? 17 pregnancies. Okay, but holy she birthed shit. 14. She birthed 14 of them. Like, naturally birthed them, 14 of them. And ten of them <laughs> died in their youth. Oh yeah. my god. So, just absolutely wow. insane. And because of all the fortune teller's words, she was a very fearful and protective mother, obviously. I can only imagine. Of the surviving four <laughs> kids. Yeah, she's like, listen, we gotta get this shit together. Yeah. So, um, again, she herself kind of becomes a psychic palm reader. They have tried analyzing, like, her situation in today's time because of, like, what happens later with the yeah. murders. So they said, like, these people trying to diagnose her, obviously, like, hundreds of years later. Right. But they said, in today's world, she would have been described as paranoid, obviously incredibly depressed, superstitious, and having deep-seated anxieties. Mm -hmm. So this woman, even though she was... Like, a lot of people came to her for her psychicness. Yeah. Like, her personality was very off-putting. Right. They were not comfortable. <clears throat> yes. So, well-liked by the neighbors. It's kind of a blurred line whether these people who came to her were friends or yeah. if they were strictly clients. But she was well-respected. Well but also, it's said that she obviously took advantage of people. Right. She wanted their money. Um, money was definitely, like... An objective for her mm. in her murders so huh. let's get into it yes so starting in 1939 she's around the age 46 her oldest son was also her favorite probably just because of everything she's went through right but she was extra protective of him and he decides to list in enlist in the army um, during the time of World War II Okay. So she is convinced he will die. Right. He will brutally die. Right. And she wanted to protect them at all costs. And the only way to do that was through human sacrifices. <laughs> no one knows where she got this. They said this does not stem from like some old Catholic. She was obviously Italian. So Catholic and like Romani mm. um, cultures. And they were like, this doesn't fit with even the psychic stuff. Right. Like, where the hell did she come up with yeah. this? So, maybe this is, like, just coming from all of the superstition and, like, fucked up stuff her mom told her. Maybe. But she's like, yes, we must kill in order to protect you. So, oh her, she decided she was going to target neighbors, some middle-aged women that were kind of down on their luck. And again, we don't know if these, these women did, did come to her from help, but we also didn't know if they were like actual friends of her. Right. Right. So the first woman is 
Faustine Setti. <clears throat> Definitely Italian. Mm -hmm. She was a 70 year old mm -hmm. lifelong spinster. Spinster. Like, like making threads like wool and stuff. Or, okay. Yeah. So she sought Leonardo's help to help her find a suitable husband. She was lonely. She was like, we're good neighbors, you know a lot of people, you know the town, oh. like, can you help me find someone? And Leonardo goes, ding, 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 I found you a man. So she decides that this is where she's going to start setting this plan into action. Oh my gosh. She tells uh, Faustine, yes, I have you a man, but you can't tell anyone of the news. You need to run off with this guy, let me handle how people see this. So she persuaded her to send to write letters and postcards to friends and family explaining that everything is fine. I'm just leaving. And that by the time she reached um, the town of Pola, which again is another Italian place that I don't know, <laughs> that um, Leonardo herself would send off the letters for her in her honor. Sending her up to die. Yeah, and it's in her own personal handwriting, and so she was, she's okay, and yeah. she's alive, and wow. So, before this woman leaves town, she, Leonardo asks her to pay her one last visit, just as a nice little farewell. So, she goes, um, Leo goes to her home, Leonardo of goes course. to her home, murders her within, wait, hold on, did she go to her, her like, paid Leo visit her home? No, she goes to Leonardo's home. Oh my Sorry. God. Go to the murderer's home, pay her one last visit. Um, that is where she is murdered with an axe, and her body is drugged to a closet just until she decides what to further do with the body. So she's an axe murderer. Oh my god! Oh yeah, I can't That's wait. Brutal. I cannot wait to tell you how this ends because you're gonna be like, and that takes Holy a shot. lot of strength. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of range. The other like, thing we should fuck? talk about is what this woman looks like. And you should Google a picture of her real quick. So, Leonardo, just type in Leonardo Serial Killer. Yeah. I don't want to spell her last name. It's way yeah. too difficult. But she looks like the stereotypical, like, scary nanny. Like, this older woman. She almost looks like borderline Russian. She looks scary as hell. Ooh, yeah. Like, wouldn't you describe her as, like, the stereotypical, like, she old school like nanny? She looks like the scary woman from Matilda. Yes. Trunchable. Oh, or yes. Trunch, Trunchable? Doesn't she? That's yeah. what she reminds me of. Yeah, like, she looks terrifying. Oh, my like, God. Like, I don't want to see that woman, let alone with an axe in her hand. Holy so, shit. All right. Yes. So, drags body to the closet. So, she then cut the body into nine pieces and put them in a basin, which is so just like a large bowl. Yeah. And it is alleged that she received this woman's life savings, which when you do all the inflation translation, it's $16 in today's money, which wow. back then, like they do Italian liar, yeah. which... And, like, it took me forever to figure it all out. Mm -hmm. But um, that was given to her, supposedly, for payment for helping her find a suitor and to... Um, oh, send all the letters. Send, send all, all the letters. So here is wow. Leonardo's official statement regarding this woman specifically. Oh, my God. I threw the pieces into a pot, added seven kilos of caustic soda which I had bought to make soap, and stirred the mixture until the pieces dissolved into a thick, dark mush that I poured into several buckets and emptied into a nearby septic tank. As for the blood in the basin, I waited until it coagulated, dried it in the oven, ground it, mixed it with flour, sugar, chocolate, milk, and eggs, as well as a bit of margarine. Kneading all the ingredients together, I made lots of crunchy tea cakes and served them to the ladies who came to visit, though Giuseppe and I also ate them. I'm pretty sure Giuseppe was either her... No, it wasn't her husband. I think that was one of her kids. Is it Giuseppe or Giuseppe? Giuseppe, sorry. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, first of all, she said pieces and not body parts. 
Yeah. Like, it was not, it was like, oh, it's just another ingredient. <clears throat> yeah. No big deal. Yeah, pieces. And then she's making, like, this cake, and to me, I wonder if this is where the name of Red Velvet Cake came from, <laughs> because, like, you're throwing in blood. I'm like, yes. Red Velvet. I, my first thought was, have you seen Sweeney Todd? Mm -hmm. It's like maybe, but I think Sweeney Todd was also based off another real killer. Jack the Ripper. Yes, that's yeah. what it is. But very similar. And oh, when she says the ladies God. who came to visit, she means like her other clients. Right. Like she's feeding them her Like her how body. disgusting. Oh my God. So, fast right. forward shortly after, again, this is all happening in less than a year. I think it was like 11 months. Yeah. That yeah. when put yeah, the plan in action. Yeah, in like a year. Yeah. So, second victim, this is September of 1940. Leonardo claimed to have found, oh, sorry, this is Francesca Soabi. Um, she claimed to have found her a job at a girl's school. She was a school teacher. So... Just like the previous lady, Leonardo dissuaded her to write postcards that would be sent to her friends and family detailing the changes in her life plans. Um, I'm assuming it was like maybe because these women were like leaving. Yeah. It's like the idea was like, oh, my family will try to convince yeah. me. So what you need to do is just, just go and, saying that and then fine. I'll send them so you don't have to deal with the stress. Right. But master manipulator. Again, she came to the house to pay one last visit. Boom. She this time was giving given drugged wine and then killed with the axe. Oh, so she well, was completely I drugged. It. I would prefer that. Yeah, I'd rather not know I was being murdered. murdered. But yeah. killed with the axe. Wow. And again received her payment. It's equivalent to a two dollar payment. This one was a little less. A little bit less. So she didn't give an official she statement. This one. She's like, I didn't get paid for the, the yeah. official statement. Right. Then. Did uh, she turn her into a cake? Probably. Yes. Yeah, so that was still um, the cake. So who was this human sacrifice? Just the first victim? Well, these are all. All of them are. Any person oh. she kills, she's like not stopping. She doesn't okay. have a number in mind. Right, like, she just needs to keep going to keep her sensing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God, okay. Yeah, so she's just going, going, going. She's just okay. doing it so quickly. Oh, my gosh. So the last one is Virginia Capicchio. <laughs> right? Can I think it Cachapo? Cachapo. Virginia. Cachapo. We're going to call her Virginia. Woo! So... Alexa and Cadence learn to tell you. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> this is the third and final victim only because she does get caught. Sorry for the spoiler. She leaves a trail behind. Yes. So. so Virginia was a widow and a former soprano at La Scala, which is a famous opera house in Italy. Mm. Um, <laughs> I put Leonardo... <laughs> A motherfucking again found her a job <laughs> as a secretary and told her not to tell anyone where she was going. I love it. Love your nose. <laughs> I typed this late last night, guys. So, um, said, hey, I found you a job. Don't worry about it. Don't tell anyone where you're going. Just go. I'll handle the details for yeah. you. So, September 30th. So, we are just a few weeks after that last murder in 1940. Yeah. She agreed. She said, hey, fine, I'll come by your house for the final visit. Mm -hmm. And she murdered in the same fashion. But this time, she took a large pot and actually melted the body down to make soap. So she's like, you know what? Tea cakes are kind of getting to my digestive system. Skin, I need to clear it up a bit. Let's make some soap. Yeah, so just FYI, everyone, she is the founder of gelatin. <laughs> You know those she, tasty jello treats you like? Yeah, you know those gummy bears? No. Sorry. You don't know what you're eating. Yep. Is it cow? Is it pig? Or is it human? Or pieces, <laughs> a.k.a. human flesh. Yeah. No, I'm so. just kidding. She didn't create gelatin, <laughs> but she is creating gelatin. But it's a fun story, so yeah. we're going to go with it. Yeah, we're going to go with it. 
Um, <laughs> she this time received an equivalent of twenty nine dollars. Oh, assorted big jewels. Spenders. Yeah, well, she did get jewels, jewels and some public bonds. So this lady, I'm she guessing, is her her, her status. Yeah. Which I'm thinking, you're a famous opera singer, or former. Like, why can't you just go get the job? You're, well, the job doesn't exist. That's probably on. Like, yeah. why couldn't you just go get the job yourself? Because it's not a real it's job. Not a real job. Be nice to not figure out my own story before I figure it out on camera. Okay. <laughs> Here's her official, Leonardo's f official statement for Virginia. Get the words okay. out. She ended up in the pot like the other two. Her flesh was fat and white. When it had melted, I added a bottle of cologne, and after a long time on the boil, I was able to make some most acceptable creamy soap. I gave bars to neighbors and acquaintances. The cakes, too, were better. That woman was really sweet. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, she is not a cannibal, like, prior to this. She just no. thinks, like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to boil them and eat them and see. My thing is, what well, we'll talk hell? about, like, her confession and everything, but yeah. the fact that, like, she went into detail in this kind of way is, like, right. baffling. Right. I mean, it's, and it kind of, it does kind of go back to, like, where did this come from? Like, yeah. where did this ritual, like, come up in your head? Because everyone's like, yeah. no, this was not our culture. Like, this, this is just Even random. the psychics are like, we don't fucking claim that. Is so. that an Aries thing? Like, just coming up with crazy shit? I mean, I do love to eat people, but... <laughs> I mean, I do make gelatin all the time. I mean, I love jello. And I make, I make soaps and cakes. I do make candles. <laughs> she <laughs> does make candles. Watch out. So that's Look what out. smell was, that candle. The most acceptable smell. <laughs> so. She was really sweet. <laughs> Here's my cologne candle. This guy, he wasn't as nice, so it might have a little bit of a dank smell to it. Yeah. But. This girl, she smelled like sprinkles. So, here's my sugar cookie candle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's gross. It's so gross. So, how it ends is yes. this previous lady, Virginia, um, her sister-in-law, Albertina, which I hate all these names. They're like men names that mm. they tried to make feminine, like mm. Leonardo, Albertina. Yeah. Like, Leonard and Albert. Yeah. <laughs> like, Ew. Um, she was very suspicious of the le of the letter and yeah. the sudden disappearance. She was like, "Huh, -uh. this isn't wrong. right." And she'd actually seen her going to Leonardo's house at one point. Oh wow! Um, and just assuming, oh, it's for the psychic readings. But now right. that this is she's happening, like, she's like, going on. Mm, "No." Right. So she almost immediately went to the police. They opened an investigation, and then they brought Leonardo in. Good. She didn't confess to the murder at all. It was deny, deny, deny until the police had no other direction to look except to maybe her son. Oh, shit. They were like, mm, well, if you didn't do it, like, maybe there's a possibility your that son is connected it. to this. And she's like, er. Yep. Immediately she goes, nope, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> He's my prized possession. Which he would have I was just doing this to him and sacrifice to keep him safe and war. That's it. That's it. That's it. Guys, guys. Okay, 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 okay. Bye. 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 And then I wanted to make soaps and cakes. They were tasty. They were so good. You should smell them. This one tastes like eucalyptus or smells like eucalyptus. So, just, in, I mean, it's kind of funny too because it's like you were so worried about. Like, he would have survived in jail. Yeah. I mean, he would have went to jail. Maybe she was just so scared of him being in a jail. Yeah, but I'm he like, was her prized possession. She's not going to let him go to jail no, for something she was like, she did. Absolutely not. It was me. And so yeah. this is where she just, like, word vomits everything. everything. Oh, I, I mean. <laughs> I can't even imagine. Okay, let's go. She went on um, to confess, take all the blame. She was tried in 1946 remain remained unrepentant the entire time was not sorry she was like i did this to save my son i am a good mom yep she even corrected um the whoever while she was on the stand like, because he got one of the details wrong about like the, the murder prosecutor, yes probably. the prosecutor so this is she was a, like oh uh-uh 
actually you the scent this. was lavender. <laughs> It was a red velvet cake, yes. not a chocolate cake. Did you not see the red in there yeah. from the blood? Yes. That's yes. what she said. <laughs> so direct quote from Wikipedia. <laughs> At her trial in Reggio Emilia last week, poetess Leonarda gripped the witness stand rail with oddly delicate hands and calmly set the prosecutor right on certain details. Her deep-set, dark eyes gleamed with a wild inner pride as she concluded, I gave the copper ladle, which I used to skim the fat off the kettles, to my country, which was so badly in need of metal during the last days of the war. All right. So nice. She was thoughtful. Very recycle-conscious. Yep. So, obviously, she was found guilty. Yep. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison. That's it? 30 years in prison and three years in a criminal asylum. Oh, get this Just like the fortune teller for the fifth. Yeah. Prison in one hand, criminal, criminal. asylum in the other. Yeah. And that's exactly... Yeah, what happened. What happened. Crazy. Wow. See, so... Also, I made a note about, like, what this was like. So... I love looking into, like, the history of, like, a, like mental hospitals and asylums. Oh, 100%. We are talking about the 40s. Like, I, even though it is 33 years. All the experiments. The experiments and just the, like, basically torture that oh, went sure. on in those asylums. Like, this woman clearly deserved it. But, like, there were also women who just had, like, PMS or... PTSD. depression that were like sent to these asylums and like brutally mangled tortured yeah so fascinating definitely not the place you want to be in the 40s yeah. as a woman did you look into like the one that she was sent to if she it didn't say because this is it's all probably, and even if something happened the records are probably gone yeah anyway. like, yeah they don't want to hold any accountability for it right so <clears throat> She ended up dying of cerebral apoplexy, which is, like, similar to a stroke while she was in the asylum. Oh, wow. Um, this probably was from all the torture. Probably. Absolutely. Um, this was in 1970, so she was about 77 years old, which is really impressive that she made it that long. Yeah, no kidding. Like, Especially holy shit. People. Yeah, right? Like, clearly not the best diet, but maybe... Maybe we're maybe. missing out. Maybe. So, anyway. Hey, celebrities, tell us. <laughs> Yes, here is my favorite part. <laughs> Every time I look at Doesn't a picture. Doesn't blood like keep you young? Yeah, especially if it's from children. Now, she's drinking middle-aged women blood. Yeah, she fucked up there. That's probably why she looks the way she does. Probably. It's terrifying. She didn't look young. Favorite part of this whole thing. I have a new bucket list item. What? The pots and axes that she used to murder and boil these victims are on display. Shut up. At the Criminological Museum in Rome. There is a Criminological Museum in Rome. A Criminology Museum? Well, it's Criminological is what it's called. Oh. I had to practice that word. In Rome. In Rome. And you can go. Google you can Google this specifically and it shows you yeah, the display case. Everything. Like a witch, <sighs> probably like a big old like a witch. cauldron. Yeah, a cauldron. Oh my gosh. Wow. So I put I put in my notes. Officially on my bucket list. No pun intended. Not Her Rome. Just, just the museum. No, just the museum. Fuck Rome. <laughs> Anyways. I thought that was wow. so exciting. Yeah. Um, that's crazy. Obviously, a lot has been, like, depicted of this woman's story. Specifically, there was a, a, a play or musical written called Love and Magic in Mama's Kitchen. It's a oh dark God. comedy play that ran on Broadway in the 80s. 1980s. Oh, my God. Yep. Um, or what about Hocus Pocus? Like, right? Where, that's where this comes from. No joke. But... Obviously, lots of other films and writings, but here is one of the best parts. So, she wrote, hand wrote a 700 plus page memoir while she was in prison called Confessions of a Bitter Soul. So, earlier, um, when I was reading like that ingredient list, yeah. she wrote recipes. Shut the She fuck wrote up. recipes on how to make 
human flesh into cakes and soaps and shit. It's all in the memoir. Oh my yeah. god. Uh-huh. Now, the thing about this mm -hmm. memoir is it is hugely contested because obviously it was written in Italian. Right. And it was the way that it... I read a, several conflicting blogs, but mm -hmm. it was like when Western culture got a hold of it, they went the psycho true it. crime route. Yeah. And so even a lot of the, th the details um, yeah. about her killings, people are like, there's no way that this little older woman could have chopped up these people and done this. Well, she fucking did. They pulled her in yeah. and they brought in a cadaver and they said, show us how you did it. <gasps> how, show us how you by yourself did cut this. a body part into nine pieces and she fucking did it. Oh my God. Yeah. She was like, boom. Yeah. She goes, axe. <laughs> yeah. Pot. <laughs> like, I only want an axe. Yeah. Where are my essential oils? We got to make this shit smell good. <laughs> Where's the olive oil? <laughs> Eggs. Chocolate. <laughs> um, no. They, so wow. the blogs that kind of contested, they yeah. say that like, Western culture makes it like way more graphic than what it was, but it's yeah. like no, she. No, and it's the truth. Honestly, as far as the manual labor of things, she had these people come to her house. Right. She used a freaking axe. Yeah. Like, come on. What a crazy woman, full yep. of rage so, and determination. Yes, I mean it, it's crazy. All so the energy that the Aries get—that's what happened. She got all of the energy, but she was ready to kill, and she saw red. Yep. She was and determined. She was hungry. On she top of it, it. Have, she I don't cake. Have you guys ever met an angry woman who is hangry at the same time? Like, get out of the way. Make she sure. <laughs> she came up with the word. Leonardo came up with the word hangry. Yeah, well, that's how I was going to finish my story. Is hangry <laughs> was invented in 1892 <laughs> when she was born. Yeah. She, her first word out of the womb wasn't mama, it was hangry. Hangry! And then she had this, like, little mini axe. It was really cute, though. Like. <laughs> so, oh that God. is actually, it's a way shorter story than what I was expecting. But that wow. is the short story of Leonardo Kappa Kappa Kiko. <laughs> oh, my God. Gonna get us canceled. She's Leonardo like, Cappuccino, canceled. the inventor <laughs> of the human latte. <laughs> it's crazy, wow. guys. That is crazy. Yeah, nuts. I just can't imagine that one day you just wake up and you're like, one, I'm gonna murder someone. Yeah. Then I'm gonna eat them slash use like you're can you imagine being her and like you're showering and you're like, hmm, Virginia, you smell nice. <laughs> no. I can't imagine you like what in her mind like why not just get rid of the bodies like the first one you know pour it down you know the drain or whatever like yeah why well part of her but why not just like get rid of yeah. it like why what makes you think oh I need to put this on a cake or yeah. make it into soap like and she went as far to tell people that like okay let's say that yeah she did bake them and eat them to hide the evidence but then to like you could have just said oh I poured their bodies down the sink or I put them in the septic tank or whatever fed them to some to the, farm yeah, eggs or pigs. yeah but no you're like no I ate them and served them to Lucille down the street yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, all my other clients you and can my buy them son, my son my, ate them too throw my Etsy shop for $5.99 <laughs> a bar like <laughs> she was very proud of it yeah it's an, it's nuts. So unreal. Wow. Look out! It's Aries month. Yep, it is Aries season. Wow, great so, story. Great story. Crazy. I'm on a roll with like the women serial killers too. Yeah, I know. Delphine, Leonardo, yeah. uh, Leonardo, Leonardo. Wow. Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you to our patrons over on Patreon. Yes. You can find that on our website. Um, you, you guys fully support the podcast, so we appreciate it. There's lots of opportunity for you guys to interact yeah. and see, see some like behind the scenes 
especially like pictures. We always upload some like goofy pictures on there. So we really do. Yeah, go check funny. it out. Yeah, and follow our sponsor, purchase from them, Color Up CBD. Go to colorupco.com to get 20% off of all of your CBD skincare needs, pet stuff, just CBD in general. Yep. Use code SINISTER20 for 20% 20 off. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. we will see you guys next week. Stay Bye. sinister.